You guys, you guys, look at all these books about World War I. Yes, the camera did shake a little bit there. But if you have clicked on this video, then you are looking for nonfiction books about World War I. Now, I'm going to give you tons of recommendations for this. I am writing a historical fiction book right now about World War I, and I have read so many books along the way about World War One. And first, I must tell you that some of these books, while they are in name fiction, they are ostensibly fiction, I'm including them as nonfiction because they are really just thinly veiled fiction, right? I mean, they are written as a first person account of somebody who experienced World War One. So basically what some authors decided to do when they came home, they basically wrote their memoir, their war memoir, but they used a different name and maybe they changed, you know, just a few facts just for narrative arc. Now let's start with the one that's on the top here you can probably see it and that is All Quiet on the Western Front by Eric Maria Remarque. Now if there's any book that you should read about World War One it is this one and of course this is technically fiction like I was saying before but Eric Maria Remarque basically wrote this uh, you know it was his experience he was a soldier and it's very visceral you're reading it basically with the understanding that this is kind of what he experienced himself. Even if you're not interested in World War I, this is a book that I highly recommend reading. This is one of my favorite books of all time. I really think that it captures in a way that no other book that I have written. Correction, no other book that I have read. I obviously did not write All Quiet on the Western Front. Just how easily the little guy, you know, the average person is used as a pawn by certain governments, by people who are in power, by people who are rich to get what they want, how they are duped into doing the dirty work of people who want to keep their vast fortunes or to expand their vast fortunes. Now the next one, The Enormous Room by E.E. E. Cummings. The, the famous American poet E.E. E. Cummings, he went over to France to work as an ambulance driver and a friend of his who went along with him, he got really disenchanted with the war. He wrote some letters to his dad back home, based basically saying what a joke it was. These letters were caught by the censors. And then his friend, so E.E. E. Cummings' friend who wrote these letters and E.E. E. E. Cummings himself were sent to a French prison because they were not following the narrative of what they were supposed to be thinking. So very interesting book to read from that perspective, just how pretty much how dumb that war was. And you know, if you didn't go along with what people were saying, with what the government was saying, this is what happened to you. Next book on my list, Now It Can Be Told by Philip Gibbs. So Philip Gibbs was a war correspondent during the war, and essentially this is the book that he wanted to write while he was there, but which he couldn't write because of the army censors, right? I mean, they were not allowed to really say what they saw. So this paints a very visceral picture of what was really going on, kind of what was really being hidden to the public, you know, how these men, all these soldiers, whether whatever side you were on, they were essentially being murdered because they were being sent on these battles that they had essentially no chance of surviving just, you know, for morale, right? They wanted, they were ordered to take this particular hill because it was good for army morale. And then in the process, 75% of the people who went to go take this hill, they were killed or they were injured. And this was all just, you know, so that the old men back home could feel like that, you know, they were making progress in the war. Next book, Death of a Hero by Richard Aldington. This one, again, is fiction, but essentially nonfiction. It is uh, Richard Aldington's experience with the war. And I can tell you that he's quite bitter with what happened. Now, before we continue, just a quick little PSA announcement about this channel's monthly book club, which you can vote for every month. Just head on over to the community tab. Now, I don't know what month or year you're going to be looking at this, but head on over to the community tab, which is where I am right now, and you can vote for whichever book you want and then whichever book gets the most votes. And that is the book that we will be reading for the subsequent book club for next month. I'm looking forward to receiving your vote. Now another first-hand account, and this one is actually a first-hand account, it's, it's not written as fiction, it's Storm of Steel by Ernst Younger. So this is a German soldier, similar to All Quiet on the Western Front. A different perspective, I wouldn't say that he's as bitter as maybe some of the other soldiers that went there, and it kind of reminds me that it's really hard, so if you are somebody who is researching history, it's really hard to know exactly what happened because everyone views history 
through a different lens. Everybody has a different perspective. So it's really hard to know exactly what happened, which is why I wanted to read very widely and many, many firsthand accounts. Another firsthand account is Memoirs of an Infantry Officer by Siegfried Sassoon. Again, this is fiction, but you know, not really. So this is Siegfried Sassoon's experience with the war. He's somebody who, you know, went into it. He's an English guy, even though he sounds German. He's not German at all. I guess his mom just liked the name Siegfried for some reason. But he's an English guy. He went into the war guns blazing. He was very much behind it. And then he started to grow disillusioned with what was happening. And he basically ended up talking out against the war, which was very, very something that was very, very frowned upon back then. As I mentioned in terms of Philip Gibbs, there was a lot of things that you couldn't really say. You know, the same with E.E. E. Cummings, right? I mean, he was put into jail because he thought about the war in a way that was not really smiled upon by the authorities. So there was only certain things that you could say. Now, another fantastic memoir is Goodbye to All That by Robert Graves. Now, I actually would say in terms of just pure enjoyment, I actually enjoyed this the most out of all the memoirs that I read. It really had a lot of that dry English wit when he was in the war. So this actually, it, it talks about his, his life as a child too, and it goes into the war and then after the war, and he talks about just the way that he lays out some of the stupid things that the army would do, some of the things that they were required to do and just how idiotic it was. He just kind of lays it out there in that dry English way with that English wit. And I found myself laughing hysterically many times throughout this book. Another memoir is Keeping the Old Flag Flying by Kenneth Basil. So this guy, he's, he's not, you know, a famous writer like Robert Graves or Siegfried Sassoon or Richard Aldington or Eric Maria Marark. He's just some normal guy who put his experience with the war down onto paper. What happened to him is he actually was injured, so injured that, so a lot of times when prisoners were injured, they would just go to prisoner of war camps, but he was so horribly injured that he couldn't even, you know, be used as a worker or something like that for the other side. So he was allowed to be sent to a hospital in Switzerland, which obviously was a neutral country. So it was his experience in this hospital, this Red Cross hospital in Switzerland after he was severely injured in the war. There's a devil in the drum by J.F. Lucy. So this guy's an Irish guy and he was actually a soldier so he joined up into the British Army and I actually didn't even realize that Ireland was still part of the United Kingdom before World War One broke out. So actually Ireland was granted home rule so they were basically going to be allowed to rule themselves. This happened right before World War One happened but because World War One broke out Basically, the British government just kept saying, oh, you know, okay, okay, we're just gonna delay it, delay it, delay it, and then we all know what happened after that. But this guy was an Irish soldier, and I was actually surprised to learn how many Irish people were part of the British army. So this was his experience in the war, total first-hand account. So if you are a writer and you're looking for details, like how do you write what it was like to experience the war, this is a great one to pick up. And since I am talking about Ireland, this one is Dublin's Great Wars by Richard Grace. So this guy is a historian and it's essentially about Easter Rising. So Easter Rising was a particular uprising in Ireland in 1916. So initially when World War I broke, Ireland was very much behind it. They wanted to fight. They wanted to join up and help to fight to defend Belgium because kind of the story that was sold was that Germany had invaded Belgium and Belgium was this little country and it was, you know, the duty of Great Britain to defend the little guy, right? And so Ireland being also a little guy got very much behind it. Well, you know, as you may predict, people in Ireland started getting a little bit disillusioned with that story because they started realizing, hey, you know, like I'm the little guy too and why are you treating me like this? So this is the story of Easter Rising and essentially how there were, Ireland itself was very divided in terms of whether or not to keep supporting the Irish soldiers that were there fighting in the war or to break apart and to be their own country. The next one, very interesting book, uh, A Tommy at Ypres, Walter's War. This is essentially just this man's letters, British guy, letters home, his diary, uh, his experience in the war at Ypres, which if you know anything about World War One, Ypres was a salient, so kind of like a piece of earth that jutted out into German territory. And it was an absolutely horrific place to be. So if again, if you're looking for details, this is a great book to read for that. And it, it, it really just exemplified how a lot of these soldiers, especially sort of like the British mentality in terms of what I've been reading, was very much to just, you know, grin and bear it. They didn't really 
complain no, no matter how absolutely appalling the conditions were that they were living in, no matter how absolutely appalling it was, how many people were getting injured, how many people being sent to their deaths for no reason. They kind of just were like, well, that's my duty. That's my duty as a soldier. The next one is The Pity of War by Niall Ferguson. Now, if you know anything about Niall Ferguson, he is a historian who likes to look at things in a way that other people don't look at it. So he, there's a lot of facts and figures in this book that kind of dispel a lot of myths or at, at least attempted to dispel a lot of myths that you are told in terms of, you know, why did we get into the war? Why did Britain get into the war? Why did the United States get into the war? So this this kind of goes into a lot of the narratives that you're told by a lot of historians and he's trying to say no he's trying to debunk a lot of myths very interesting read from that perspective so another book that I'm recommending is kangaroo by DH Lawrence now this is fiction but especially the chapter 12 called the nightmare it's really much just known now that it was essentially what happened to him DH Lawrence was a famous writer at the time he was very much against the war he was actually married to a German woman at the time and so this chapter is about his experience of how he believes that he was harassed by the British authorities because he was married to a German woman essentially and yeah so it was very interesting to read it from that perspective the heavy obviously anti-German sentiment that was felt throughout Great Britain at the time you know because I think people think oh of course the British hate the Germans at the time but that's that's not true because I think people kind of conflate World War One with World War Two. like before World War One, the British really hated the French and they were friends with the Germans so it's it's kind of interesting how it was suddenly turned on a dime and that if you were associated with Germany in any way, if you had married someone who was German or if you were half German yourself, just how you were prejudiced against within British society. This one is called A War Imagined by Samuel Hines. Now this was an interesting read because, so he's a, a professor, so he's a professor, you know, a modern professor in this same age, and he looked at all of the art and writing that was about the war. It was an interesting read because after I had read all these memoirs and, you know, sort of seen how many of these writers like a lot of the themes that a lot of them had in the books you know the themes of it was the young generation against the old men back home they were being sent to their death by the old men, by the politicians, by the rich aristocrats, by the companies that made the weapons. So this book essentially goes into how that might not necessarily be true because this was just sort of like the themes that were accepted that these artists wrote about. So it was interesting to think about it in that perspective that because it's so interesting just how you look back on something, a lot of these memoirs that were written, these writers wait, waited, you know, like 20 years to write it so who knows like some if I was writing about something that happened to me 20 years ago especially something very traumatic it's hard to know how accurate I would be in terms of what had really happened. So this next one is Hidden History by Jerry Dougherty and Jim McGregor. This one was a little bit funny it was very much going into you know all the conspiracy theories about World War One. why did it really start it wasn't you know the war was sold as you know we're making the world safe for democracy if, if we don't go fight this war you know civilization will be lost and this was essentially going into what are what are the political reasons for this war what's the money that's going to be made what's the territory that's going to be gained so that was that was pretty interesting to read it from this perspective I mean I did think in many ways what they were talking about was like a little far-fetched. I was like, you know how sometimes people have conspiracies and you're like, well, it almost seems like so complicated. Like, why would you do that? So, but it was interesting just to see it from that perspective of what money was made during the war, what territory was gained during the war. So from that perspective, it was a good book to read. Next one is The Poems of Wilfred Owen by Wilfred Owen. It's interesting, so when the war first broke out, a lot of these poets that wrote about the war, they were very much like a gung-ho, you know, very patriotic. Then as the war sort of dragged on, because when the war first started, there was a lot of romanticism about what it meant to even go to war. You know, war to people in those days before World War One was, you know, I'm going to ride off on a horse and I'm going to battle a dragon, right? I'm going to be a knight in shining armor. But that's not what the war ended up being. It was essentially the first truly modern war. It was gruesome. And the part about it that was particularly gruesome is that the people who were in charge of the armies, whether you were English or British or French or Russian, a lot of the people that were in charge, they still kind of believed that like 
cavalry that horses was like the way that they were going to win the war so it was just like mass slaughter all the time they'd be like well as long as you're on your horse you know a machine gun isn't going to really affect you so they just kept having you know people trying to run across no man's land going through barbed wire without any protection against machine guns without any protection against shells and then you could imagine that a lot of these soldiers that experienced world war one they began to get very disillusioned with it and then some of the poetry became very visceral and very gruesome so it, it's a good it's a good thing to read from that perspective next one another another english guy nothing of importance by bernard adams so this guy wasn't really any famous guy at all he was just you know somebody who wrote about his experience so it was very interesting from that perspective i do believe he actually died yes if i'm remembering right i, I read this a while ago but yeah so this was his eight months that he spent uh, in the trenches and then he ended up dying another great one is Forgotten Voices of the Great War by Max Arthur. Now this is just essentially short interviews by tons and tons of people. This is a British guy who wrote it, but it's not just British people who are interviewed, and it's not just men either. It's, it's from women's perspectives as well. I, I actually vividly remember a woman who was interviewed who had just gotten married, and then her husband went off to war, and she found out she was pregnant, and then, you know, a couple weeks later, he was killed. But it's interesting because it's told from the perspective of all sorts of different people. German prisoners, British soldiers, women, like I said, doctors who were on the front. Very, very interesting from that perspective. Very, very worth reading. And now we have A World Undone by G.J. Meyer. Yes, G and J, two letters that are easy to mix up. Now this is a straight history, so this guy is a historian, but it was one of the best straight histories that I've ever read. It read like a novel. Of course, you probably wouldn't be that fascinated by it unless you are interested in World War One, but I'm assuming that if you've made it this far in the video, you are very, very much interested in World War One. So it's essentially just the history of the war, all of the major players, what happened. I truly could not put this book down and it is very long. It's about, it's over 700 pages, but I read it very quickly. It reads like a novel. It's not one of those dry histories that you're forced to read when you're in high school or anything like that. So fascinating. So if you honestly, if you, if you only read two books, I would read this one and I would read All Quiet on the Western Front. But I hope that helps you put some books on your list if you are interested in reading nonfiction about World War I. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I have lots of different book recommendations. I personally am very fascinated with World War I, but that's not the only thing that I read about. And it's not the only thing that I write about as well. I am writing a historical fiction book about World War I, which is why I've read so many of these books. But subscribe to this channel for book recommendations, for book of the month class, clubs, for book of the year clubs, for book reviews. Subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you soon.